God. Amen. Luke 11. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank you that, Lord, we have this privilege of meeting together, that we can open your word, and we ask you for your blessing. <laughs> We ask you for your favor, that you would come into this place this morning and teach us your word, your ways. Lord, we know that your ways are far higher than ours. And that, Lord, unless you reveal your ways to us, we will never rise or achieve what you want us to. So, Father, we ask for the revelation of your your word to come into our hearts, open our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears, and give us a heart to believe. We pray the enemy would be bound and that Jesus Christ would be lifted up. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk this morning about the Holy Spirit, the power of Pentecost. We are a Pentecostal church, and I know that we can get caught up in that terminology and in that that phrase, Uh, but... The simplest of things is to just say we believe that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit of God came, and He is the same today as He was then, that God has not changed, that the Holy Spirit didn't go away after the apostles died. I don't believe that the Holy Spirit um, has withheld Himself from the church today any more than, than before. He is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Amen. And so when the Holy Spirit of God came upon the apostles, and that place shook with the power of God, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. I believe that that same experience is yet even for now, even for today. And the reason I believe this is because nowhere in the Bible does it say that it ceased. But rather it would say that as the apostles would go around, they would say, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit of God? (laughs) Paul would tell some people, Have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, Well, we were baptized by John. And Paul said, Well, that was the baptism of repentance. But have you received the baptism of fire? The Holy Spirit. That which which Jesus spoke of. And they said, we've never even heard of this. And so Paul began to explain it. And sure enough, the Holy Ghost come down and he filled them with the power of the Holy Spirit. The, The baptism in the Holy Spirit, I believe according to the Bible, is a secondary work upon salvation. Meaning, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit instantly comes into you. You are changed. The Holy Spirit of God changes your mind. The Holy Spirit of God renews you, and you are a new creature instantly in Christ Jesus. I don't believe that you have to be speaking in other tongues in order to be saved. I don't find that in the Bible at all, because otherwise there is some other uh, other way other than the blood, and that's not what the Bible teaches. But rather, I do believe that the Holy Spirit wants to indwell us, fill us every single day. It isn't even a one-time experience. I want to be filled today, but I also need to be filled afresh tomorrow. Amen? Amen. So every day I go to the well. Every day I go to the fountain, and I allow Jesus to refill me again. So, but, but why do we need this? Why do we need the Holy Spirit? Why do we need the power of God? Why is Pentecost so important? Well, I think the church today has tried their very best to be the church without the Holy Ghost. And they have failed. And, and, and today what we do is we do fog machines, we do flashy lights, we do things to get people to have goosebumps. And I'll tell you, I've li- listened to Whitney Houston sing a song, and that, that girl can sing, and I've actually got goosebumps by listening to Whitney Houston belt out a song, the national anthem or whatever, but that ain't the Holy Ghost. Whitney Houston ain't filled with, or I think she's passed on now, but yeah. she wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost and power. That's right. And yet, I could get goosebumps listening to her hit that note. That's true. That isn't the, the sign of the Holy Spirit. That isn't the sign <laughs> of a moving of God. So when the church does things to try to get us to get a goosebump, that, that isn't a sign that God is there. The sign that God is there is the moving and the working of the Holy Spirit. And the key word in the Holy Spirit is holiness. If there is a lack of holiness in a church, there is a lack of the Holy Spirit in that church. I guarantee you that. Luke chapter 11. 
It tells us in verse 13, Jesus is talking about the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he tells them, well, let's actually go up a little bit. Let's go to verse 10. It says, For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it will be opened. Verse 11. If a son will ask bread of any of you that is a father, Will he give him a stone? Now, I know we've got fathers here today, and if your son needs you, you are a phone call away, and you're going to show up. If they say, Dad, i got a flat tire, guess who's going to show up with the spare? You know? I mean, you're going to be there for your son. You're going to be there for your kid. It says, how many of you, if you have a son, and your son asks bread, verse 11, of any of you that is a father, you give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent? I mean, if your kid's hungry and he says, Dad, can you give me a hamburger? You're not going to toss him a rock. If, if your son says, Dad, I'm hungry, and, and, and you're going to do your part to make sure that they're fed. He says in verse 12, or if he will ask an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then be an evil, meaning we are fallen, we don't have it all together. But yet, we have enough that even though we have a sin nature, we're still enough compassionate to our, our, our children that we're going to do the right thing. He says, If you then be an evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to him that asks him? Amen. In other words, the Holy Spirit is a prayer away. All we have to do is ask Him to come. Every single day I pray, Lord, give me more of Your anointing. Lord, give me more of Your Holy Spirit. I can't live this life of faith without the Holy Ghost and power. Amen? So we need it every single day to live. Not only to preach the gospel, not only for boldness. Because when you look at the Holy Spirit, Jesus told them, Go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be filled, endued, with the power from on high. They weren't allowed to even go and preach until they first had the Holy Ghost and power. And when the baptism in the Holy Spirit came in that day, on the day of Pentecost, the, earth, the, the building shook. They began to, to speak with other tongues. And the men that saw this were in awe. And instantly Peter began to preach and he began to declare them the Word of God. But what's it say? It says, Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, so that means you and I need the Holy Spirit to go forth and to preach to the lost. We need the quickening of the Holy Ghost to know what to do, when to do it, and what to say. Amen? We can too often rehearse what we want to do and what we want to say. And I don't know if you're like me with this, but there's been many a times I have rehearsed what I was going to say. And I had it all planned out. And when I went up, whether it was behind a pulpit or whether it was in person to talk to somebody... When I tried to follow what I had already thought, it was, a, it was the most ugliest thing. And I looked back and I was like, oh, that was horrible. You know, when I, when I was in Bible school and they were teaching me how to preach the, the, the three-point sermon and everything, and, and I was designing it, and I would get up and I would read it. It was just, it, I didn't even want to listen to myself. It was miserable. It was horrible. And I was like, oh, I can't do it this way. This is not working out. And it was quickly when I was young and I started to preach where I just put notes aside. I would have scripture verses. I wouldn't forget where I was wanting to go. But I would just stand up and let whatever I say, let the Holy Spirit give it to me. And you see, I believe that that is a working of God that he wants to do in our heart. Because I can prepare a message, but... If it's not being moved by the Holy Spirit, then it ain't worth listening to. I've got nothing to say today. And, and I, I, I don't have no problem saying this. You don't want to hear what Lathan has to say. Unless God comes through me and gives me something to say, we're all here in vain. Amen? Amen. So I want the Holy Spirit to come. I want the Holy Spirit of God to move. And all we have to do is ask Him. Yeah. Because He's a good Father. Yeah. And he's not going to give you a scorpion when, when you're asking for bread. He's not going to give you uh, a stone when you're, when, you're, when you're crying out and you're hungering for more of him. 
So when you're crying out for more of Jesus, you're saying, God, give me your Holy Spirit and power. He will promise that he will give it to you. Amen? He is a comforter to us. Now, the other day, and I'm going to turn to Hebrews 10. The other day, I heard someone talking, and I'd already mentioned this not too long ago, but they were talking about the power of God in the Old Testament. And they were talking about how God, it wouldn't be great to have been in the Old Testament where God spoke to, to Abraham, where God spoke to Moses, where the, the, God communicated with, with these men in this great and magnificent way. And it was like, you know, we can pray today, but it wasn't nothing like what they did in the Old Testament. That, that is way more powerful back then. But, but guys, that's an error to think that way. Because something has happened. The Holy Ghost and power. He came because Jesus Christ gave his blood on the cross. He bridged the gap. So everything in the Old Testament, yeah, Abraham talked to God, but he'll talk to you too. And so if if God isn't communicating with, with us, there's a problem. Because he is more real today than ever before. If God does not talk to us every single day, it's because we either aren't born again and a child of God, or else we're not communicating with him. Amen? Because God wants to communicate to us. He wants to talk to us. The Holy Ghost has come, and he has revealed himself. And it says here in Hebrews 10, it talks about Christ being a better sacrifice. So Abraham, Moses, Elijah... Samuel, all these great men of God who communicated with the Lord. We're talking about this communication that was done. All was done by a a limited covenant. A covenant that was limited by the blood of 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 a lamb or a goat. But now, since Christ has come, the veil has been torn in two. There has been a way made for us to enter in boldly, the Bible says, into the throne room of grace. That is all made possible because of the blood of Christ. So there is no, we are in a better covenant today than we were, than anyone was in the Old Old Testament. So today, to say that God communicated more so to them is error. Because God wants to speak and communicate with us today, right now, with you, even more so than he ever did with them. And he can. Because he's made a better covenant. He's made a better way. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit has come in power and in might. And if we will ask him, if we will seek him, he will give him. Amen. Amen. It says here in verse 1, For the law having a shadow of good things. Everything in the Old Testament, it was only a shadow. So if we thought communication with God was great with Samuel, we got it better today. And, And let me just say this. You know, they all had to come. You got millions of men, but they all had to come to one high priest. You had millions of of Israelites, but they all had to come to one prophet. And God would speak to to one man on behalf of everybody. So all of the millions of Israelites, they couldn't communicate with God. It's not so today. You don't have to go to a priest. You don't have to go to a pastor. God will communicate with you right where you're at today. You are that important to him. Because we have a great high priest. We have one mediator between God and man. And it is the man, Christ Jesus, our Lord. And if you come through faith, through the blood of the cross of, of, of Christ, you can have direct access to God Almighty. And so if we think to ourselves, I don't have a good... A, a good communication with God, like what Samuel did or like what Moses did, it's because not because God didn't make the way, it's because you're not choosing to walk in it. Right. It's because you're not choosing to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power and to have that relationship with God that you can have. Because God wants to talk to you right now. He and I'm not saying it ain't gonna even be an audible voice. I'm not saying it wouldn't even be a handwriting on the wall. But whatever the case is, God will communicate to you, whether it's your spirit, Romans 8, 16, bears witness with his spirit that you are the son of God, a son of God, that you are a child of God. It is through the spirit of communication. If you be born again, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. And so the spirit of God dwells within you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will dwell in you and quicken your mortal body, praise the Lord. 
It goes on to say, uh, verse 1, Not every image of the, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. In other words, their covenant was flawed. It couldn't make them perfect. For then would they not have had to have done it every single year if it was perfect. But the very fact that every year they had to go through the Day of Atonement, every single year they had to go and follow the feast, all was proof that it was a limited covenant. But Christ, this is what the whole chapter of 10, Hebrews 10 tells us, but Christ entered in once and for all with his own blood. He entered in through the veil, which was his flesh, and he gave and sacrificed himself as the eternal Lamb of God so that you and I can enter in not through the blood of bulls and of goats, which would be an error, but we can enter in through faith in the blood of Christ and have direct access to God Almighty in person. Amen? That's what God wants to do to us today. That's what God wants to give us through the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage us right now. I want to encourage us in the faith that the Holy Ghost has come. The Pentecost has taken place 2,000 years ago, according to Joel and according to to Peter in Acts. The last day started. Pentecost was the beginning of the last days. And in terms of speaking with other tongues, the Bible actually tells us in 1 Corinthians that the speaking in other tongues is a sign to the world that we're living in the last days. It is a sign to them that the Holy Ghost has come and that we are living in that age of grace. And we are coming down to the end of that church age where the church of Jesus Christ is very soon to be raptured, very soon to be caught up and to meet the Lord in the air. The Holy Ghost has come and he has been given as a sign to the world, and you and I need him today to live this life and to fulfill the great commission that Jesus has commissioned us to do, to tell others about Jesus. I'm afraid that we are too mum, we're too quiet in the church about what Christ has done. And I want to tell us today, if you want to shout and praise God, you go right ahead. If you want to raise your hands in this church, you go right ahead. If you want to praise the Lord, whether it is through song, whether it is through prophecy, because we use discernment, whether it is through whatever means, it is for the edification, the exhortation, and the comfort of the body. The Holy Spirit has come, and you can have direct access to God through Jesus Christ. The old prophets did not have it better. We have it better now to a better covenant. That Christ Jesus has been has given. Yes. And to say that they had it better back then is a derailment from the cross. It is not understanding what Christ did for us and the promises that he has given the church. Amen. So I want to encourage you right now. Seek God. Amen. He is a good father. If you ask for the Holy Ghost, he ain't going to give you a rock. If you ask for the Holy Spirit and power, he isn't going to give you a snake or a scorpion. If you knock, the door will be open. If you seek, he promises you will find. If you ask him, he will give it to you. So let's ask the Holy Ghost to come in this place. Let's ask the Holy Ghost to speak to us. To give us a word from God. Because that's what we need in the church today. I don't need to hear another sermon about how God wants me to be rich. I really don't. I need to hear a message on how God wants to use me in this last hour. Money is going to fail. Someone said to my mom uh, a while back, they said, why do you, and they weren't being nice, they said, why do you? Why are you so afraid of money? Why are you so afraid of money? And the reason was she wouldn't accept a gift, or it wasn't really a gift, but she wouldn't accept money. And they said, why are you so afraid of money? And mom said, well, if we know what the Bible says about it, we should know why. I mean, clearly the scripture, the love of money is the root of all evil. You can read Proverbs over and over again. It, it warns about the rich 
Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And of course, if you listen to Kenneth Copeland, he's going to tell you that that wasn't really a literal eye of a needle. Don't listen to that garbage. Don't listen to the Word of Faith movement that That's preaches right. prosperity and all of these things That's now. Right. If you read the Bible, which is the only book you need to be reading, right. and it will clearly tell us that through great persecution we enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. God does not promise. Now, I'm not against... The blessings of God. God has blessed me without a doubt. Surely he has. But I can tell you right now, I am not promised that I will not have to suffer in this lifetime. I'm not promised that God's going to give me a yacht and my own private jet and my own couple of mansions. I'm not promised any of that. But I am promised this. He will meet my needs. He will provide for me according to His riches and glory. That means my bills will be paid in the name of Jesus. That means my kids will be clothed. We'll have food on the table. That means God will meet my needs. And I will be content in doing it. Amen? Paul said, I know what it's like to be content and to have plenty. And I know what it's like to be content with nothing. Either way, I'm content. Amen? So that's the heart of a believer. That's where, we, that's where we need to be. Because the guys who are preaching all the prosperity, first off, it's like a funnel. Yep. And they're at the end of it getting, getting it yep. all filled in their pockets. That's right. And mm-hmm. the widows and the ignorant and the, the undiscerning, they're the ones that are just yep. blowing it to them. And they're living high on the hog. And nowhere in the Bible do I see where any of the apostles lived in excess. But rather they gave. When, when, when I heard a guy on television years ago, when Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. They said the reason Peter and John said that silver and gold I don't have was because they forgot their wallet at home. I mean, you talk about a derailment of truth. You talk about such hypocrisy. Silver and gold I don't have. Because that's not what is important. What is important is I got the power of the Holy Spirit. I got Jesus Christ in my life. And so because of that, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And instantly they, that man stood up, strength was given to him, and he began to shout and run around and preach and praise the Lord. That's the power that Jesus wants to give to the church. And it isn't power just for wealth. It's the power of the Holy Spirit to save the lost. There's no greater miracle than a soul being saved. And that's what the Holy Ghost has come, and that's what He wants to do in our life. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage you today. Seek the Holy Spirit because He's more real now than ever before. He's more available to the believer now than any other time. God wants to talk to you. He wants to speak to you and give you a word from Him. He wants to tell you intimately what to do. The Bible even tells us that He will be with you and He will say to you, this is the right way. This is the wrong way. He will guide your very step. His word is a lamp unto my feet and it will direct my every step. Acknowledge Him in all of your ways and He will guide and direct you. Seek God and He will be found. So praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit has come. And I know right now that when I pray, I have direct access, as unimportant as I am. I mean, I'm no Samuel, I'm no Abraham, I'm no Moses, and neither are you. But yet you can touch God. You can right now pray in faith through the blood of Jesus. And you have greater access than even those prophets of old had. Because we are now under a new and better covenant. So to say anything other than that is to not have a prayer life. To say any other way than that is to not have the Holy Ghost and power in our lives. I can say Jesus has spoke to me today. Jesus, God Almighty, has spoken to my spirit. And that's not arrogant to say that. In fact, to not be able to say that is to not be a child of God. Because if you are a son of God, if you are a daughter of God, God will talk to his children. Amen. So to say that he doesn't talk to us today like he used to, which I had a woman once say that, that God won't communicate to people like he used to. Well, then they're probably not even saved, to be frank with you. Because if we're not hearing the voice of God, 
then there's a problem. The sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. They know his voice. And when he says, come, they come. They are intimate with knowing his, his sound. I want to close with this thought. Upon that thought of the shepherd, I've seen videos, you can, it's easy to find, just YouTube it or whatever. But you can find where, and I've seen YouTube videos where men would holler and shout for sheep, and they're out in the pasture way out yonder, and they don't come. And then the shepherd would come up, and they would give a distinct call, a, a call that was, the sheep knew. That was the sound of feeding time. That was the sound of the shepherd. And I've seen the videos where t entire grassland, peppered with sheep, suddenly start to move in one vivid form as they begin to form into a herd and they come running to the shepherd because they heard his sound. They heard the distinct sound of their shepherd. And Jesus says those same exact words, my sheep hear my voice. Now, when the, the hireling hollers, they don't know his voice. And he runs when the wolf comes because they're not his sheep. He don't really care too much about their souls because they don't belong to him. But the shepherd is willing to risk his own life for his sheep. And even Jesus said he would lay down his life, which he did on Calvary. Because Jesus is the good shepherd. Amen. So if God knows you like that, and he loves you like that, and he says, you ask of me and I will give. And I'm not talking about a Ferrari. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. If you ask me for more of me, I'll give myself to you. If you seek for me like how men go out and they seek for silver and gold, you'll find me. This treasure will be found by you if you seek for me like that. Proverbs talks about seeking wisdom, seeking knowledge. Many years ago, I had a pastor when I was first starting to preach. He said, read Proverbs seven times. And I, I think he was just kind of blowing me off. And I took him literally. And I read, read the book of Proverbs seven times. And I want to say I did it in a week, which... That would have been some intense reading. But, she, but I think I did read it in one week. And the next Sunday I came back to him. having read That means I read the whole book of Proverbs every day. But I came back the next Sunday and I said I read Proverbs seven times. Now what do you want me to do? And he looked at me like, boy, you know, you're a little off in the head. But ever since then, Proverbs has just, I loved it. And I continually read Proverbs over and over and over again because there's wisdom there. Yes. And the young man who will seek wisdom, the young man who will seek God, he finds it. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit has come. Pentecost has come. The Holy Ghost has been given. Seek him and you'll find him. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. I thank you that you're not holding the Holy Ghost hostage. You're not... Uh, dangling a carrot in front of us that we never can achieve. But Jesus Christ has come. You shed your blood on Calvary. You opened up the veil. You ripped it in two. The way into the throne room of grace has been completely made open by the blood of Jesus. And now we can come boldly. Now we can come to you and directly have access to God the Father through Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I ask you to come into this place right now. Fill us with the power of God. May we have the anointing of God to preach. May we have the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost to begin to walk out this word in our daily life. Father, I pray the enemy be bound. I pray the powers of darkness that rise up against us be cut off in the name of Jesus. A thousand will fall on this side, ten thousand on the other. In the name of Jesus, we keep walking on. We walk on in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray you be our shield and our buckler, the sword of the Spirit in our hand. And Father, the armor of God upon us as we are the church of the living God. 
I pray for the churches in our community. Yeah. Father, I pray for the filling of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I pray that all, all powers of darkness that tries to, to speak lies in the leadership, tries to, to put uh, uh, blinders and worldliness coming into the church, yeah. I pray it be cut off in Jesus' yeah. name. May the Holy Ghost and power bring truth, judgment of sin, a con uh, condemning of sin, and may it bring victory in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that the Holy Ghost right now would fill us yes. as we ask you for more of you. As we ask you to come into this place. Lord, I want more of the Holy Ghost. Baptize me afresh with the Holy Spirit of God. Fill me, Lord. That I would be the man you've called me to be. Touch my family. Touch this body of believers. Fill us, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just cry out to Him this morning. Just ask Him to come. Ask Him to fill you afresh. More of Jesus. No gimmicks.